I'm going to start with you, Sasha, if it's okay. I'd, you've been doing this for the last few months. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you deal with this problem? For sure. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Um, it's really, really incredible to be here and hear from such a diversity of perspectives. And I think it's um, really interesting to center the conversation about eco-anxiety and eco-anger around young people, because I think that they can bring a really novel lens to it. Um, at Force of Nature, what we do is this kind of idea of anxiety to agency or taking that anxiety and that feeling of um, hyper emotional arousal and channeling it into meaningful action. And I think what we see is that anger follows kind of the classic dose response curve where too little and you don't do anything and too much and you also don't do anything. So we're trying to find ourselves in that Goldilocks zone in the middle where you feel awakened to the problem, but you don't feel mired in the apathy or in the absolute powerlessness on the other side of it. You meet people and especially young people at all different points on that climate journey. There's people who are so anxious or so angry or so upset that they can't do anything. And there's people who shut down and they deny and they can't engage with the problems. So I think it's about figuring out how you can cultivate that anger, or that powerlessness or whatever it is and channel it into that action. And I think that is right there in the middle. What's interesting about young people, and I think about people in general, is we've even heard from a diversity of perspectives so far, you can get those feelings and anger is a reaction or an expression of emotion and you don't really know where it's coming from. But if you can start to understand where those feelings coming from, you can look towards solutions instead of capitalizing just on that feeling. And that's kind of where the difference is between anger for a purpose versus more ego-based anger. Like I am angry. And I think when we make the anger not about us, but rather about a problem, that's when you can start to see solutions. For me, it's a very tricky subject because on a realistic perspective, there isn't much anger and anxiety when it comes to the environment in our communities because we have so many other socioeconomic problems. So you can't tell someone to care about the environment when they don't even have the money to put food on the table that day. Um, so for me, on a personal view, I experienced anxiety a lot um, when the crisis hit us here in um, the Western Cape and I was like so, like I was so destroyed and I couldn't understand why this was happening. And when I went to the internet and did my research and then found out about my worst fears coming true that global warming is real, climate change is here and the world could be ending in a couple of years if we don't move um, in the right direction. Um, and I really did battle with that a bit until I found um, Project 90 by 2030, which is also an environmental club that I started, um, I joined in about grade 11. So in a perspective from my community around me, even when I was trying to get more people to understand climate change or to partake in like joining the protest, um, um, like just learning more about climate change, they were very dismissive because they were like, that's like, are you serious? Why are you talking to me about climate change when there's so much crime in our cities, where there's so much um, abuse in our cities um, so for me it was very hard to convince people to care about the climate um, to care about the environment because they had anger and anxiety for other things um, that's not climate change um, so I feel like this could be a good angle to speak to people about it but it has to have context um, in the areas that we want to use it from because um, activism from the global north is not the same as the activists like activism used in the global south that's why we encourage intersectionality so much um, so for me, I feel like it is well that we should use this language, use anger, use um, anxiety because it catches people's attention, but we also have to connect it with context um, to the kind of people that we are talking to. Um, as I said, I'm intimidated by that, but thank you so much for bringing us home to the realities. Uh, Emma, you were nodding at some of this. Can you put your, your perspective in on this? Yep. Um, so you're the you're talking about like the language that what is it, is it uh, important which language we put to these words and um because people make connections with these things but I think that no matter what word we use in terms of anxiety it could be worry concern apprehension basically we're, it's all the same and the, we could beat around the bush about it but at the end of the day we it is a feeling 
anxious anxiety is a feeling and um it, it is being felt and no matter what word we use for it um it still means the same thing but the important thing is what we do with that feeling are we going to let it take over us or are we going to use it as motivation the importance of education because we all know and we all understand that the effects of climate change affect the poor the marginalized the most because they lack the resources and any sources that they lack the resources for to um to protect themselves or to rather how can i say to have places where it, they can um be in refuge to protect themselves against climate change right so it definitely um, goes to a point of um, there needs to be education in schools. It can be door to door, anything. So to going back to Unati's point, who was saying that, because um, I, I really don't want us to generalize because she was just saying, but I understand her point where she was saying most black people don't understand what climate change is about. There is some truth to that, but then what I know is that most of the black people that are in this session, we are coming from the Eastern Cape. And we do know all of our grandmothers, our forefathers, they've been farming, right? But if you go home, home these days, these years, no one's farming anymore. It's drought conditions, right? We all know, we know, we know that culture, but now we are coming into big cities, Cape Town, right, for employment opportunities, and um, if a child grows up in an area where there's pollution, there's glass, um, papers just being thrown anywhere, will they know, will they then understand anything related to climate change or pollution or waste management if they grow up in that kind of environment? So then it's important then we start um, with the young people. Diversity needs to play a role, you know? I believe that there's a, a quote that I like to live by that says, beyond fear lies freedom. I think our problem is that we are fearful. We do not want to give anything a chance. As soon as something that makes us uncomfortable, we, we, we quickly shove it off and, and say, no, this is not for me. But then I, I believe that if we diversify and be unity, then we can take care of all those problems. You know, It should not be about black or white. It should be just gray. You know. I think those things we need to look look the, closely with a magnifying glass as to say, it's not about black or white, it's not about green or purple, it's about one, that let's diversify. Let's find, a co this, is, this is a common problem to everyone. Let's all find a common solution. Let's not say, oh, I'm not getting affected as much as the, the other people. No, 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 it should not be about that. We must always remember to diversify. And with that, there's nothing great like being different.